Hello guys and welcome back, I hope you are well. Today I'm going to be testing out a bunch of prime lenses um, just to see whether I can incorporate them within my landscape photography work. So if you're not familiar with prime lenses, prime lenses offer you know, a fixed focal length and quite often they have a better image quality than a zoom lens, in most cases anyway. Um, so I thought it'd be great to test these out. I've got a few in my bag here and see if I can get a nice shot here in the woodland. And then I'm going to go to a different woodland later on today and take a bunch of different shots from some compositions that I've shot before. So go through quite a few different shots and compare them with my zoom lenses a little bit later when I get back to the studio just to see whether um, the, you know, the difficulties with a fixed focal length are a problem and whether the image quality versus that constrictions, if you like, with the focal length, you know, mean that it's more difficult to use it for landscape photography. Now I shoot with prime lenses all the time for my documentary work and portraits and stuff and absolutely love it. Um, I've never felt any restrictions at all. In fact, I actually enjoy the fact that it's a fixed focal length. So yeah, I'm really concentrating on seeing if these can uh, become, you know, a mainstay in my camera bag for my landscape photography work as well. So yeah. I'm here in this woodland actually, I've never shot here before but I scouted this location a couple of weeks ago and I thought I'd come back to this particular spot here to shoot that old oak tree that you can just see in the background that's all twisted and looks like it's died off a little bit, suffocated from light from the other surrounding trees. So yeah, conditions are amazing actually this morning, really really misty, wet and probably as you can see from my hair, yeah, raining quite a bit too. So. I'm going to get set up here and shoot this. I've got my tripod set up here. I've got the 33mm f1.4 Viltrox lens on the camera right now. I'm going to be shooting straight through this gap of trees here at this old oak tree to see whether I can capture a decent shot here this morning. So um, what I've got in my bag um, are the 23 f1.4. I've got the 33 f1.4 and the 80 1.8 they're all Viltrox lenses and I've also got an old 50mm vintage prime lens and Nikon one which you know might come into play if I feel like I'm being restricted between the 33 and the 85 but yeah so let's get this one done guys So obviously I'm back in the studio now, I've got the coffee. What an absolute morning it really was. Truly beautiful, mystical conditions in that woodland. It really was great. And I was so pleased to get a shot with the 33 f 1.4 uh, Viltrox Prime Lens. It really was great to be able to capture that image there. So I actually spent a good couple of hours there actually fine tuning that composition and it really took some tweaking actually. but. I was pleased I couldn't eliminate every single distraction, but I think I got it as best as I could possibly get it, and I think that is all you can ask for woodland photography. So um, just a little bit about the lenses. Uh, you might have uh, noticed earlier when I was talking about it, I've got the 23, the 33, and the 85. Well, the 23, I didn't actually take a photograph with that, but it is the lens that's filming me now. So um, that's using the autofocus and the face detection as well. You'll be able to see how it works for video. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this is the 33 which I took the image with, which we're going to be looking at in a minute. And we're also going to be comparing these with some of the zoom lenses, a bit of an image quality test as well. So if you don't know um, about Viltrox, Viltrox make a range of prime lenses and lens adapters for Fuji and Sony. Uh, yeah, the third party lens manufacturer and the quality of lens is really good actually. I've been very, very impressed with them. Um, I'll leave some links down in the description if you want to go and check their, their website out and their, their details. So just quickly before we go on to take a look at the other photos that I shot this morning, I'd just like to ask you a little favour actually. Uh, I'm looking at my channel analytics over the last month or so and I've noticed that less than 10% of my channel subscribers actually receive notifications from YouTube when I post a new video. 
So as many of you will know, I post a new video every Thursday. So if you haven't been getting notified and you'd like to continue to see my videos, if you, you know, could just go and check to see if you've got your notifications turned on for my channel. And if you want to continue to see these videos, you know, please feel free to turn it on if it isn't. That would help me out a turn and you will be notified then every single time that uh, I put a video out. So you be sure not to miss one. Okay, let's get into these image, images here. See if using prime lenses was either a hindrance or a help. First, let's compare the tree photos that I shot with the 33 and the 18 to 55 kit lens. Now, I've edited all of these shots just to make them shine a little bit, but I haven't really applied any adjustments to sharpening or anything like that, just the standard Adobe sharpening. That's all you're going to be able to see on these images. So, as you can see, I put both of these images up in the reference view and they look, you know, they look very similar, just a slight shift in exposure due to the light changing you know, the conditions. Overall, there's a little difference other than the fact that the image on the Viltrox 33 is a little bit sharper, but it's very subtle. In fact, I doubt by the time YouTube has compressed this video that you're going to be able to actually tell any difference, but you're probably just going to have to take my word for it. But yeah, the, the prime lens is definitely sharper than the 18 to 55, but both lenses excel, to be honest, and both images are completely usable. So while I was at that same wonderful location, I took a couple more shots one with my old vintage 50mm prime lens, matched it with the 18 to 55 again. And guess what? Actually, the 30 year old lens smashed the 18 to 55 out of the park. But that wasn't really a surprise though, because the 18 to 55 doesn't do particularly well at the end of the focal range. So once it gets past about 45mm, it does tend to soften up a bit. So I wasn't surprised at that at all. And that old Nikon uh, vintage lens is actually really good. It's really sharp, but it does suffer from lens flare and a few of the things like that. But that didn't really come into play during this session here in the subdued misty conditions that we had. Further on, I used the Viltrox 85 f 1.8 and I paired that up against the 50 to 140 Fuji f 2.8. And as you can see, if I zoom in here, that the that the Viltrox is uh, just a tad sharper. And you know, that, that does surprise me a little bit because the 50 to 140 is an incredibly sharp lens. But that being said, you know, the Viltrox does come out a little bit sharper, but it's a prime lens, you know, you probably expect that. But yeah, really, really insane image quality from both of those lenses. And yeah, really, really well rendered image. So after I finished that woodland shot, I went on to do a couple more shots, this time with the 33, matched it with the 18 to 55. I found this fabulous little tunnel arrangement with, uh, which was created with some overhanging hawthorn trees. Another mystical looking shot with a mist, you know, hanging in that sort of archway there at the background with the light coming through. And side by side, there's not a huge difference, um, but the 33 is just a little bit sharper again than the 18 to 55 but it's only uh, a small amount and you know, nothing really, you know, it's, not, it's not like a standout difference, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, to be expected, but both again, both images, you know, completely usable. I didn't really have any problems in terms of positioning here either. I could have positioned myself anywhere within this tunnel to get that effect really. So I wasn't, I wasn't restricted by the fact that I couldn't zoom or anything like that. A bit further on, I went to a, another local wood in a different place. But I used the 85 um, and matched up against the 50 to 140 lens and uh, took this image of this beautifully characteristic silver birch tree. And uh, I focused right in the middle of the trunk on both lenses. And as you can see, the image quality from both of these lenses is absolutely incredible, really, really uh, sharp. But where the 85 really shines is when you move over to the edge of the frame. So if you see here, when I move over to the edge of the frame on the left hand side here, you can see the foliage on the 50 to 140 lens is a little bit soft, but over on the left there with the 85, it's still tack sharp. So it really, you know, come into its own around the edges of the frame. So the prime lens, you know, obviously winning uh, in, in terms of the image quality throughout the whole image. So, so I've got a bit of an example here how using a prime lens can be a little bit problematic, if you like. Let's take a look at this image here, of this birch sapling. And as you can see, the framing on, on, on the first image here is a little bit too tight. Uh, there's not room for the uh, sapling to breathe within the frame, if you like. It feels cramped in. 
and that's because I'm quite close to it and, and I've had to position myself in just a spot where I'm not bringing any sky detail in because just in the top right there's a big patch of white sky. You can see some over the left hand side of the frame as well and you can also see light coming through the foliage. Now what I decided to do was to swap out the 85 for the 5140 zoom lens and then go right back about 50 feet further back and then zoom into the image. And what happened when I did that was the, the sapling appeared smaller within the frame and I was able to get more breathing space around that sapling. I was able to include more negative space and I was able to eliminate more of the sky as well. You can clearly see I've got more space at the top right hand corner. And with the gaps in the foliage as well, because my field of view is a lot narrower, I'm able to close those gaps up in the foliage as well. So those gaps are not as big, so they're not letting as much light through. So this can really clean up the composition in the woodland. So yeah, a zoom lens can work really well in certain circumstances like this. And I would say that, you know, I couldn't really have got the same image here that I've got with a zoom lens with this 85, because I just didn't have enough focal length. So yeah, a bit of a, you know, trade-off really I suppose, better image quality but then restricted in terms of the focal length in itself. So for me I actually like the challenge that you know using a prime lens throws up for landscape photography. I find it, you know, I find it fun and the added bonus of image quality is always a nice thing as well. Would I swap them for my zooms? Probably not but would I add one to my bag for a day out woodland uh, doing woodland photography? Yeah I absolutely would. I think I'd probably go with the 33. This, you know, tend to I tend to gravitate towards this. I, I managed to capture that really nice shot with this. So yeah, next time I go out to the woodland, I'm definitely going to be taking the 33 with me along with my other zoom lenses for sure. And uh, I'm sure I'll get some use out of it. So onto the print. Let me go grab it quickly. Ugh. Here it is. I'm really pleased with it actually, really pleased with the print. I'll hold it up for you so you can see it. You might be able to see it there. Um, yeah, really pleased with it. This is on A3 Platinum Etching. Really mystical looking shot. I've got this, the branches there reaching up to these two patches of uh, sky and obviously it's uh, failed to get enough light so it's been suffocated by the surrounding trees which is a bit of a shame. Beautiful little oak tree, I think it is there. And yeah, it would have been nice if it had made it, but sadly it didn't. But anyway, it's uh, created a lovely photograph for me. So I'm really pleased with it. Um, if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description. You can go and check out it in more detail on the website if you like. It's never that easy to see the quality of a print when I'm holding it up here. So yeah, head over to the website if you want to check that out in a bit more detail. Before I leave you guys, just a quick note on my woodland photography workshops. Um, I'm going to be running them up until mid-November, just to make the most of the autumn colour, and then I'm going to stop running them. But I will be continuing my Peak District one-to-ones, and they'll cover mountains, streams, and some woodland photography. So uh, you know, a bit of a, a mixture, if you like. But the the actual local woodland ones will finish at the end of November. My particular woodland that I've got local to me isn't particularly great during the winter. It's quite bland, it doesn't have a lot of character through the winter months. So I will be finishing it mid-November and then I'll pick it up again. I would have thought beginning of spring. So I'd be looking forward to that. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching today. Really do appreciate it. If you, if you liked it, please consider liking, subscribing, all that nonsense. And I will see you next week when we'll definitely be out shooting some more landscapes.